Hi, my name is Bryce Neal. <coughs> I'm the CTO of Gameduel, and I'm very proud to welcome you to um, our Gameduel Tech Talk here in our office. Um, yes, we did it again. We found another great speaker for our um, Gameduel uh, Tech Talk. Uh, it's Jean Frazard Akon, the author of um, Atmosphere. It's a web socket framework. And um, he will talk to you about um, atmosphere framework. And so I wish you enjoy the talk, and I'm happy to, to hand over to Shof Asako. Okay, so thanks for coming. So my name is Jean Francois. I'm from Quebec, which is Unfortunately, still part of Canada, but give us a couple of years and we're gonna fix that. <laughs> so, who I am? So, uh, if you are in the Java land, uh, I'm the author of uh, the Glassfish microkernel because it's based on the Grizzly NIO framework. Uh, but I don't, I no longer work on these two library. So, I'm the author of uh, AHC, which is an asynchronous HTTP client, and that it supports WebSocket as well. And of course. Uh, I'm the author of Atmosphere, and I was 10 years at Sun, but I, had, I, I was never an Oracle employee, so I run just before. So what, I'm gonna give, what I want to do today, and please interrupt me at any moment, I want to talk about uh, what is Atmosphere. First, I'm gonna give you what the framework tried to fix, and after that, I'm gonna give um, some, and, and it will be intermixed with, uh, with demo, and, uh, and I will try to, uh, and I will give some part of the code, so how, how you can build uh, an atmosphere application. So sometimes it's the part that everybody falls asleep, so just let me know when I can go faster if it's too bad. So right now, atmosphere is uh, literally uh, exploding uh, in terms of usage, in terms of, uh, of uh, people talking about it and people about using it. Uh, the, in the interesting part here is it's supported by most uh, mostly more than 25 frameworks. So take a framework and uh, and uh, usually if they have a push module or a WebSocket module, the WebSocket the, the, that module is built on top of Atmosphere. So most of the time people are not say or other framework they don't tell you that it's built on Atmosphere, but uh, it is. So the only framework that we don't that I haven't yet implemented support is the Play framework, uh, but that. That should come over the year. Uh, so we already started the discussion. So uh, we have a lot of followers on Twitter, and our mailing list is growing a lot as well, and it's growing pretty fast. So just before we go into the detail, so there is a real website right now called Wall Street Journal that is powered by uh, Atmosphere. So every day, we, it got 60 million requests. So I gave a talk in French a couple of weeks ago, so I had forgot to translate later, that one. <laughs> so it built on Atmosphere 1.0.9 and JT 1.8.1.3. Uh, so, and I challenge you, if you want, after the meeting, go to the Wall Street Journal, open the developer console of Chrome, and you will see there is a WebSocket call there. So it first used WebSocket as a transport. Then if we, uh, the browser doesn't support WebSocket, it used long polling. And in some pretty ugly browser like i6 and 7, even long polling doesn't work. So we have to use JSONP for that. Uh, and uh, I already say that, but I can see how all the uh, user agent uh, that goes to Wall Street Journal. And there is some pretty obscure browser that, that I didn't know before that are there as well. So all those obscure browsers, uh, they use JSONP. So this is the, the kind of browser we support. So the good news is Internet Explorer 10 support WebSocket. So because how it works on Wall Street Journal is we first try to open a connection using WebSocket. If it works, everything goes there. If it doesn't work, we fall back to long polling. Yeah, so this is uh, IE 10. It, and it, surprisingly, uh, Internet Explorer works pretty well with WebSocket. So I think it's the first time in my life I see something more than IE. <laughs> so there is no act, there is nothing. So actually, the only bad client with, uh, 
with WebSocket is uh, Firefox, who around Firefox 10 decided that they didn't like the, uh, the W3C uh, name that was given to uh, create a WebSocket in JavaScript. So instead of calling it WebSocket, they're calling it uh, Moz WebSocket. So that's painful because if you write, uh, if you want to support, or if, if a browser, if you try to look up the WebSocket uh, object in Firefox, it will fail because it has another name. So you need a switch statement. And we're going to see that right now the states of WebSocket, you have a lot of oops and, and switch state, statement all over the place. So that's why you want to use Atmosphere because it abstracts all of this. So how many of you first have already used Atmosphere? Okay. You seem, you seem happy, so that's okay. So how many of you know what is a WebSocket or have used WebSocket? Okay, that's pretty good. So you kind of agree that it's a socket, you know, now you, you open the browser and you have a socket like we, like we did before with a normal Java application or any kind of application. You open the socket to the server and that's it. You know, there's nothing new there. What we did uh, is we just port that uh, concept to a browser. So the talk is finished because now you know what is a web socket. <laughs> so, this is how they define it, actually, but mostly it's what, what we wanted to have is a way to communicate but bidirectionally from the browser to the server. Because uh, originally, uh, and, I, and I will show a lot of, uh, of technique uh, that, uh, that were used, used before to kind of simulate real time uh, using, uh, using, the, using a browser. So a lot of people for doing real time uh, were using Flash. But there were other applications that they were kind of able to, to simulate um, real time. But of course, with WebSocket, it works much, much easier. So this is really an important warning because a lot of people are like, wow, wow, who wants to do WebSocket? It's the solution for everything. Well, for at least five years, a lot of application that runs on the web, they just use long pooling and it works pretty well. So be careful when you uh, if somebody really wants to do WebSocket, you know, make sure you have the good reason for using it. Because, uh, I, because in, again, in Atmosphere, it supports long pooling, and I have a lot of clients that use just long pooling. They don't need WebSocket right now. So how was it working like, let's say, 10 years ago? Let's use uh, a mail application like, like, like Yahoo Mail. You all recall that 10 years ago, you, you connected to your email account and uh, you had uh, a parameter somewhere or a configuration somewhere that you can uh, set and say, okay, update the, the, the page like every 10 seconds or every minute. And uh, how it was working is you were sending a request and most of the time, since no email has arrived or no event has arrived, uh, what you were getting with polling is an empty response. So we were wasting a lot of bandwidth because I guess, I'm sure everybody wanted to have like their email coming as fast as possible. So everybody was changing the, the, the setting and set it to one second, let's say. So what, what, what has happening at, at that moment is that the, the, the server, the, 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 the browser was literally bombarding the server with requests and what the server was doing is just sending empty response. So we said, okay, it's probably not the best way for doing that with HTTP, so let's try long polling. So with long pooling, how it works is you send a request to the server. If the server has an event for you, it sends it automatically, like a normal HTTP request. If it doesn't have uh, an event for you, what it does, it suspends the connection. So it just holds the connection, waiting for an event to happen. So that works pretty well, except if you were in the Java land for, uh, for a couple of years, what, what it means by holding the request would mean that it has to block on the thread. So have a thread that block and wait for an event to happen, an I.O. event to happen, or an, an event. So that wasn't pretty good because if you have 5,000 users, that means that your server uh, will have 5,000 uh, concurrent thread uh, aligned, which, well, performance-wise, it will suck. So, but still, people were able to do that. They have like, so people were doing like clusters of, uh, of server and dispatching to that, and that was working pretty well for long walking, for, for, for long pooling. So, but what 
so why commit or long pooling became uh, more popular in Java is mostly when, when NIO, the NIO API was, uh, was implemented in GDK 1.4, even if it was pretty crappy, so framework on top of it, they were able to do kind of, uh, of interesting stuff on top of that. And then you have uh, seen like Jetty, Tomcat, Lastish, they all started using NIO. And with NIO, you didn't have to block one thread. Like by default, if you use Glassfish, it only has five threads. So it just it is able to hold the connection, but without being stuck on a thread. So that's why long pulling right now is probably the most popular uh, technique, and it's much more popular than what even WebSocket for now. So what is HTTP streaming is mainly the, di the difference with long pulling is now we never close the connection. So we open a connection to the server, and what the server will do, it will chunk uh, the response. So every time there is an event, it's going to send it to you. And that worked pretty well in the intranet. As soon as you go outside, uh, it, you have trouble because, and I'm going to show more detail about that, but uh, some proxy, if they, if, if they look at a connection and they say, they say, okay, that connection is open for 10 minutes, and nothing has happened, or there's a lot of things happen on that connection. Uh, I don't like that, I just close it. So in that case, streaming wasn't working, uh, doesn't work pretty well, because you're back at the, the stage of having a long pulling connection. So Gmail is using streaming, it seems to work well. It's really hard to see exactly what he's doing under the hood, but uh, supporting streaming on the client side is a nightmare. Uh, mostly because of Internet Explorer. So again, if you look in the code, uh, in the atmosphere that JS or the JavaScript code of the framework, I think there is two kilometers comment about, okay, this is how you, you do it in Internet Explorer. Because it doesn't work the same way as other, as other browsers. <coughs> Sorry. And finally, we have WebSocket, which actually does mostly the same thing as uh, streaming. Uh, except that now you open a single connection and then you can send requests and, 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 and uh, receive response at any moment. So here I use request response, but it's really you can send a message. Once the WebSocket handshake has been uh, accepted by the server, then you really have a socket, uh, you really have a channel of, of, of communication and even can happen on both sides, which is really different if you think about long polling or HTTP streaming where you do a request, you get a response. Now with, even, now with WebSocket, you don't have to send a request, you can receive, the software can decide to send you bytes at any moment. <coughs> so, WebSocket is, of course, it's HTML5, it's bidirectional. It works better than uh, long pooling and HTTP streaming with proxy and firewall. I say better because I'm gonna show an uh, example where it doesn't work. Uh, there is less network overhead uh, because you know when you do uh, when you have a request response protocol, you send like headers and you get back the response header. So all these response headers, let's say if you do a chat, they are almost always the same. So for every for every response, so you use more bytes. So with WebSocket, you just send a message. You don't have to to put headers uh, in the message. It's faster again because there is less byte moving back and forth, and. Uh, the interesting part is you can write sub-protocol on top of WebSocket. And if you look right now, there is more and more uh, sub-protocol that are coming, like, uh, for, 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 uh, for, like, as an example, for the mobile industry, uh, like Ericsson was pretty, uh, was a, an adopter of the SIP protocol, and the SIP protocol was built on top of HTTP, but they had to act like crazy to make it work. Now they're moving the protocol as a sub-protocol of WebSocket, which will work, which we hope will work pretty well. So what you do with WebSocket? Of course, you do real-time apps, you do collaboration, uh, apps, present, notification. Uh, you can do almost anything, especially if you use Atmosphere, of course. So, but it's nothing really uh, complicated with WebSocket. So the only thing that we realize, we realize that uh, when we have created the HTTP protocol, like 15 or I don't recall how long the protocol was there, but there were a header called upgrade that nobody was using. So we decided, okay, let's go with WebSocket. Let's use that. So this is the request that uh, a client will send, a browser will send uh, for WebSocket. And what's it, it's interesting, without going into the detail of the protocol, 
But the two things that are, the two headers that are important here is so we ask for an upgrade using the upgrade header and connection up upgrade. And what we are getting from the from the server is something like that. So we said, okay, now we're going to switch protocol. And this is the handshake part usually that, that we call. And uh, so that response means that the WebSocket uh, uh, connection is established and both sides of the connection can start sending a request. So life is pretty good. It works pretty well. Oops. So if you use Tomcat 7 or Tomcat 6 and Safari, Five. Oh, they decided to not implement uh, support for Safari 5 because it's a no version of WebSocket. So you start being having trouble. Let's say you write a Java application right now. You deploy it on Tomcat 7, and all the mobile that use iOS 5 will not work with WebSocket. So you need a way in that case to, uh, and this is what Atmosphere is doing, is you need to downgrade or to use another transport to communicate with the server. So usually, uh, you're going to fall back to long calling. So atmosphere to the rescue. So this is the API, uh, <coughs> the JavaScript API. Pretty simple. So uh, you create a WebSocket. And this is here. This is uh, the object that I was talking about earlier, where uh, in, in uh, Firefox, you have to call a Moz WebSocket. So you need a switch in your code to make sure that you don't have an undefined error. So on the server side, there is no standard yet, and you have a lot of uh, applications supporting WebSocket. I would say that Node.js is one of the most popular because Node, in general, is really popular. But you have other library and implementation like Pusher, JT Glassfish, all the Java web server are working on uh, on the, on uh, on an, they have a native or they, their own uh, API for doing that. So that means that if you write an application, a WebSocket application on JT, uh, you cannot like uh, run it on, on Tomcat because the API is not standard. Uh, the good news is, and I'm part of that GSR, so there is a GSR 356 that uh, will define uh, uh, an API, but we are far away from the, whoops, <laughs> we are far away from uh, the easiest of atmosphere, but still, you know, you should see more and more uh, soon, with it, it will be part of Java EE7, so, uh, so we should see at least that standard being applied. So on the client side, so the client side has been dropped in the GSR 356 so far, so there won't be, like if you're in Java, there won't be uh, a library that, uh, so everybody will, again, will do whatever they want uh, for the API, but I recommend you use the one that I wrote, so that's why I, I put de facto, I said de facto because it's, that one is pretty popular as well, and what you can do in AH is you can plug the provider you want uh, under the hood. So let's say you, if you want to use the GT client, you can plug it under the hood. So you have a standard API and you just change the implementation under the hood. So uh, for WebSocket and for uh, for Scala and Java, so uh, so this is uh, West thing. So it's a new library that I wrote recently, which actually it's uh, it's used AHD. But the good news about it is that uh, if WebSocket is not supported, it will downgrade or fall back to long polling or to HTTP, let's say. Uh, in so it's not really useful most of the time uh, because what you know, you know, when when you do the request, you know which server. Uh, you are using in in uh, in Java, but still it, it, it's useful. So for a second, I'm gonna I'm not gonna talk about it. It's a sub protocol that we wrote at Wordnik that run on top of WebSocket, and it has a standard API for both client and server. So who knows French? So here, what it says, it just said that nothing will be easy. But it's really in Quebecois. It's like. Nothing will be easy. If you want to start using WebSocket right now, uh, don't assume that it will work uh, everywhere. Don't assume that your server will have the proper implementation or specification implementation. Uh, use Atmosphere. So let's, but before, let's just, um, let's just do a demo now. Okay, let me restart that because usually it never works. I just want to show you. That's good. 
that doesn't look good. Let me see. Okay, so it works. So what this, this thing is doing, so as soon as I type, it goes on Twitter and look for the hashtag uh, GameDuel. So here, we can see that uh, right now, there is nobody tweeting about that. But if we had Twitter here, there is always someone tweeting. So now you can see that the information arrived in real time. So this is the kind of application that you can do with Atmosphere. So right now, since uh, this browser uh, support WebSocket. So we're using WebSocket under the hood. And it's not as fast because the Twitter uh, search API is not using WebSocket. So what I'm doing here for the demo, so I'm communicating using WebSocket using the local server, and then remote and the local server do an HTTP call to the search API of, uh, of Twitter. So but you can, we can put more power here. We can move more load. So let's see. It still work. So as you can see, they, 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 you can have a lot of information that transit over a WebSocket. Oof, it worked. <laughs> okay, so let's go, uh, let's just take a look at uh, the issue that uh, we faced when you write, uh, when you want to write a real-time application. And I'm going to start with long pooling. And uh, so how it works is the browser is doing a request and uh, on the server, the request is suspended. You wait for an event to happen, and then you send back the response. Looks pretty simple, except that if you send a request at the same moment the event arrives, then oops, you know, we can all go to sleep because we just missed the request, the, the, the event. So when you connect, what happened is, oops, you arrived there, but the event has happened before the reconnection or the connection has happened. So you just missed one, uh, one even. So what you need to do, uh, if you do long polling, if you don't want to last a uh, message. So some application you can last message, there is no problem, or last even. But I suspect that most, most applications, you don't want to lose anything. So what you do in that case is you have a cache on the server side. And so even if the, the event arrives, uh, what you do is you cache the event, and when you connect, then you look inside the cache and send back the response. So this is pretty simple, but if you start, let's say, without a framework like Atmosphere, so you have to implement that. Of course, the good news is in Atmosphere, it's there. So you don't have to do that. So now we can push the limits again. We can uh, try HTTP streaming. And again, we have the same problem. We have similar problem where, so an event happened, we send back the response. Oh, there is another event. Since the connection is still open, we can send the response. So then, why use WebSocket? It works pretty well with streaming. Okay, so it's, it's a nightmare to implement in Internet Explorer, but I did it in Atmosphere. So, so why not using uh, HTTP streaming? First, like I said, JavaScript hell on the browser side, but it's all abstracted by Atmosphere. But second, so yeah, so I have a hack something that, that works. Second is, oops. A proxy may decide to close the connection, like I said earlier, because it thinks that it suspects the connection of not doing anything, or the connection, or there is a timeout. You know, we, we, there is so many proxy uh, implementation that uh, we, you, can, you cannot trust those guys. So again, uh, you need a cache and uh, to fool the proxy, because some proxy they will just close you close your connection because nothing has happened on that connection. So what you can do in that case, what you need is a heartbeat. And you just send, you fool the proxy by sending empty uh, character, white space. And the proxy says, okay, something is happening on that connection, uh, then I'm not going to close it. And I suspect this is what uh, Gmail is using. So it's better, but still, it's HTTP streaming, we kind of push the limit of the protocol because the HTTP protocol by default, is really a request-response uh, protocol. Here, it's like, can we do a request? We send a couple of, of response. Is not sure. So, but there were this uh, server-side event, that API, that was defined uh, like two years ago, which actually is just the, <coughs> the goal for SSC is to fix HTTP streaming by having uh, a formal API on the, on the client side and uh, a protocol to communicate 
a protocol on top of HTTP to communicate with the server. Uh, it works pretty well, but again, you have the issue that if there is a proxy, uh, it's going to get closed. And more important, so who have used uh, SSE? So what's the issue with SSE and, and browser? Exactly, so it's not supported at all in the Internet Explorer. So again, you have to, you need kind of a hack. You can uh, use, it's kind of using HTTP streaming, but now in Internet Explorer, you have to understand the server-side protocol, or implement it yourself in your JavaScript. I don't think anybody wants to do that. So it's better, uh, so if you know, if you're in an intranet, and everybody's using the same browser, except uh, Internet Explorer, but again, you need a cache, you need a heartbeat to make it work. So, and yeah, I like that one. So now let's talk about WebSocket. So you do the handshake. So if the server agree with you, uh, you have a, a persistent connection. After that, you can send requests on that connection and even happen response, request, request, response. You know, you, 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 have, it's, it, it, you can do whatever you want. You have a connection and it's, uh, and it's safe to write and read at the same time on that connection. That's pretty useful. Uh, at any time, you know, you, like I said earlier, when you do a request, you don't need a request to get a response. So, again, some French. So it's it's a song that we sing in Quebec when we are happy. Problem is, oops. If we face a proxy, so some proxy like uh, mod, uh, mod proxy for Apache, as of now, doesn't support WebSocket. So he will close us directly. He will he will never let us communicate actually. So you need to have to use like HA proxy. You can configure it, and uh, you really have to read the documentation of your proxy. So, and this is an issue that I see <coughs> arriving with a lot of Atmosphere customer is they test locally, they, and it works pretty well. They put it in production, work pretty well as well. As soon as they open to the web and open and make it, fr and, and and they have a proxy in front of Atmosphere. Oops. Some application doesn't work. This is where I usually get the call. I think I have a lot of meeting today. <laughs> okay, so better again, you can cache it because some proxy, they will consider that as an HTTP connection, so you can apply the same trick as, uh, as with, uh, with other techniques. So, life is good. Again, this is the song I'm not going to sing, but a big hoops here because now here, Let's jump in the Java land. So this is the what exists right now. And so, oops, it's free for all. So some browser works with some server, but they don't support all of them. So of course, you need help. Streaming is the same issue. SSC, JSONP, long polling. Of course, Atmosphere the rescue. So finally, let's jump into more detail about, about Atmosphere. So at the really low level of Atmosphere, there is these two API that you can use that abstract and shield you from the nightmare of browser and from the nightmare of all those API on the server side. Which means that if you write an application using Atmosphere, you don't have to care about uh, what's, what's available under the hood. If, <coughs> if let's say, you use IE6, no, I hope you don't use IE6. <laughs> Let's say you use IE9, which isn't supporting WebSocket, and uh, you connect to JT7. So what Atmosphere is doing is it will, it will negotiate the best transport for you. So since in that case, WebSocket is not supported, transparently, it will use long pooling. So the good news about that is when you write your application, you don't have to care about that negotiation. You use the standard API. Of course, you can tell Atmosphere, I want to fail if WebSocket is not supported. But by default, Atmosphere is able to, uh, to negotiate. So the good thing about that is you write your application and whatever, uh, you don't have to care under the hood what's happening on both uh, browser and server. And it's the same for all. So it's the same for SSC, same for long pooling. So it's really one API to rule them all. So it's pretty simple. So, uh, and that's why, and we su also support some protocol in Atmosphere because it's pretty simple, but we do support the Socket.io, which is a well-known uh, library used uh, in Node.js, so they have a protocol. So we support that as well in Atmosphere. So let's say you don't like uh, 
atmosphere that uh, J JavaScript don't like my code, he wants to use another uh, client library, he can use Socket.io. We do support GWT as well, natively, so there is actually, there, it was given by a, by a company, which what they did is they added atmosphere support to GWT, so if you like GWT, uh, you can use atmosphere, and like Wicket, JSF, etc., they all, they all have, uh, actually Wicket and JSF, they use atmosphere.js. So it makes your application portable, so there's, it's the first thing, but the second thing is you don't have to care about all those oops that happen on the server side or on the browser side. So, <coughs> and this is the most important slide. I think I can go, I can stop the, 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 the presentation right now, but please remember that. Let's say you look at Atmosphere, you don't like it, you decide to write your application and, you, and say, okay, I'm gonna use WebSocket, so forget it, if you deploy in production, it's right now on the Wall Street Journal, it's 43% of the browser uh, support WebSocket. Like if I look every day, so it's around 43%. So all the remaining are still using uh, old browser. So even if Chrome auto-update itself, even if Firefox, you know, it's easy now to, uh, to update, you know, people are updating browser like every month, like right now, in big or in large company, that, that won't happen. You know, IT are blocking that. So you have to make sure that you have a fallback mechanism supported. Okay, so let's do, yeah, let's do another demo. Better, there is no exception on Firefox. So. <laughs> so here, it's really always a challenge to demonstrate, but it's really to show that uh, every time I click in one place, I'm supposed to have to show something here. I think the window. No. No? Okay. So it's supposed to show, I think, it's the network. <laughs> okay, so but the idea here was to, is it started above? Let me reload Firefox. It seems to have. No, the remote display. But the idea was if you click somewhere on the map, like here, then it display on the other one. So the other one is stop. That one. Uh huh. But now, let's try. Right, it doesn't want to. But it seems to work because it, it display on the other one. Anyway, so the idea was to show you how simple <coughs> it could be. So um, let me try again. Let me restart. <laughs> I don't give up. Because it was working pretty well. It's always worked pretty well, it's just here it doesn't work. something broken here, but I know how to make it work, but uh, mm -hmm. let's see. <laughs> oh, no, let, let's not start on that one. But anyway, I, the other sample should work. Okay, so now let's jump into uh, what is an atmosphere application and, uh, and see some code, and then, uh, and then we can have a open mic. So the idea here, and it's pretty simple, so you have two uh, components in Atmosphere that are important. You have the concept of an interceptor. So if, how many of you have worked with servlet and filter? Okay, so the, the interceptor is the same as filter, but it's really where you can put uh, information that apply to all your, um, your Atmosphere handler. 
and uh, your handler, let's call them handler. And it's really uh, where you can put some logic uh, that you don't want, let's say, that's kind of a plugin API in Atmosphere. So for example, uh, let's talk about Android, my favorite, my favorite one after Internet Explorer. So in Android uh, 2.3 and uh, 3.2, there is a major bug in the, uh, in the HTTP class. So if you don't send, uh, if you send a message lower, if you use long polling or streaming, if you send a message uh, that is less than 4K, so on, the, on Android, on the, 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 the browser will never know that there is some data available. So it will never read the data. So you send something and nothing happened. So you need to have padding. You need to have white space on every request. And I'm not talking about website yet, I'm talking about HTTP. So, uh, so that's pretty ugly, and uh, that's challenge Internet Explorer in, ter in terms of bad thing. But, uh, so what you, what you want to do here in Atmosphere, or what is already available, so I wrote an interceptor there that will look at, okay, okay so this is ugly Android calling, so every time the user or the application writes something, I'm gonna uh, add 4K, uh, of white space. And then Android miraculously starts working. So you can put that in your application, but that makes the code and the logic pretty complex for nothing. So that's why uh, in, in that case, with Atmosphere, you're gonna write an interceptor instead. Or you will use an already available interceptor. It's the same, uh, let's say, for uh, if you want to write, uh, to, 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 let, to write an handler in atmosphere, but you write, you want to write your own protocol in between the client and the server, so you can decode the message that is coming, you're going to use an interceptor. So, let's say enough of ugly browser, now let's talk about uh, atmosphere handler. So an atmosphere handler has, if I show you, has uh, three methods to implement. So, on request, when the request is coming, you get an atmosphere resources, uh, and again here, you will never see like something specific to WebSocket. No, that's not true. I will show you, but you don't have to. Uh, on request is when the user connect. So if it's a WebSocket, what Atmosphere will do under the hood, it will execute the end shape and, uh, and call on request. If it's long polling, what Atmosphere will do is it will let you decide in, in the on request, okay, so do I want to use long polling? Do I want to use streaming? Uh, there is an API available to tell the server, okay, suspend that connection, or all that connection, keep that connection open. So that's the first, uh, that's the first method that it needs to implement. The second one is uh, on-state change, which is called when uh, three things happen. When uh, you want to broadcast so, uh, a message to all suspended connections, for example, if we uh, talk about a chat, so, uh, so let, we're going to have one suspended, one suspended connection per user. And every time one user sends something to Atmosphere. So uh, what you're going to do in, in, in the on request method, you're going to read the message and broadcast it to all suspended connections. And, uh, and an application or an handler will get called, on state chain will get called with, uh, with that message. So then your application, you decide, okay, I write it back to the server or I change it, and you can do whatever you want with the message. The second time it gets called is when uh, the browser closed or the, the connection gets closed remotely or by a proxy. Because some applications, they will have a lot of heavy data associated with, uh, with the user. Like for Wall Street Journal, we have a lot of information about who you are, so we can do stuff with it. But if you disconnect, what we do is we just clean that, clean the, the DB. So when we get the event. So that's a pretty important uh, event to, to handle as well. And the third one is if the, when you suspend the connection or when, when you, uh, let's say, handshake with WebSocket, you can set a timeout. You can say, okay, leave that connection open for 10 minutes. If nothing happened, uh, resume the connection. So you get called as well in unstate chain. Now I'm talking about really low level stuff in Atmosphere. We, we will see the code that it's much more simple to do. So this is the API that I'm talking about. So you have uh, three methods to implement. Uh, on request, on state change, and destroy is when you uh, undeploy your application. 
So uh, a simple chat uh, will look like, and I say simple, but it's extremely complex, is, uh, will look like that. So you, when you get a request and it's a get, like it work, uh, uh, initial WebSocket is always a get, long pooling, you can set the, the client to do a get. Then we're going to suspend the connection, we're going to tell uh, the browser, okay, uh, hold that connection, I'm going to send you uh, more information later. And when we get a post, like if it's a chat, what we do here is we read uh, what, what the, the, this browser is sending and we broadcast. And again, in uh, Atmosphere, broadcaster is really a channel of communication. You can see that as a topic as well if you do a uh, pub sub system. You know, it's a, a topic that you listen to. So here, all the, uh, all the atmosphere resources that represent the user associated with the default broadcaster uh, will get that message. So that's the on a request method. So now here it's pretty small because I don't want you to see that. But if you use atmosphere by default, if you write your own uh, uh, atmosphere handler, here you have to know uh, you have to decide, okay, do I want to resume the connection? If it's WebSocket, I need to do something different as well. So it's not really nice. Uh, I started the framework thinking that, wow, pretty simple, everybody will like it, but it ended up that uh, nobody wanted to do that kind of stuff because every application would have to do the same. So this is where the interceptor was, uh, was interesting. So now, Let's say we instead of using uh, of implementing the uh, the atmosphere handler, now we extend uh, the uh, another handler called on message string, and here we define two interceptor. The first one is the resource cycle lifecycle interceptor that will take care of suspending the connection, and the second one uh, broadcast on post uh, will, will be useful because every time the browser is sending something. What that interceptor will do is it will read the byte and broadcast it to all uh, to all connections. So pretty simple. So here, what you need, what you hands up here is instead of uh, writing kilometers of code, all, all the thing that you have to do is to write back the message here. So here it's more, it's kind of complicated. Uh, has more line of code because I'm using Jackson for uh, read and, and write the message, but I'm just echoing what I'm receiving here. So pretty simple, or much simple. So well, here if we, we go here, so we have two interceptor, but uh, if uh, there is a proxy that closed us right now, so we haven't uh, put any information about uh, the RB interceptor since uh, since you have, we have to add it manually. So again, for for the majority of users, they don't want to care about that. They don't even want to define it. So what you can do, you can go more high level again, and instead of, uh, of uh, extending or implementing anything in Atmosphere, now we have a pure POJO, but here we use a new annotation called uh, Manage Atmosphere Handler Services. We define the path, and here it's pretty simple uh, as well. So we just annotate our uh, class with message, and every time there is a message, so we get called. So it's much simpler, and again, we have abstracted everything like from suspending and broadcasting. It could work and it worked for a lot of applications. Uh, so I strongly recommend that if you start with Atmosphere, start with something that, that has the manage uh, uh, annotation in, in the title. So it make it much more simpler than you know, starting trying to understand when I suspend and do I broadcast. But of course you can always go down, go back to implementing the interface yourself, but it's much more work than, uh, so I suspect that uh, it's better using the manage. So, and what it does actually internally, here is what it does, it just add uh, for you, it set those interceptor. So here you have the heartbeat interceptor that we get for free. The track message side interceptor is a, uh, an interesting one. Sometimes, since we're using real time data, so you broadcast a lot, so you set a lot of uh, data uh, to back to the client. And uh, what's happened is, if you, let's say you, we use JSON, we send back JSON to, to the client. So if two message, and you never, you, know, you don't know what, uh, let's say we use JT, you don't know 
you can predict the message size that you're going to send. So JT may decide to, instead of sending one message, you're going to send two JSON messages. The problem is, on the, ser on the client side, you receive, two, two message, you receive one message, but it contains two JSON messages there. So if you, want, if you try to parse that, then you're going to have an exception on the client side. Because it's not a valid JSON. It's not an array. It's just two messages that, that got concaten concaten concatenated uh, because you're, you're sending a lot of message in that case. So the track message side interceptor in Atmos is really interesting because it makes sure it doesn't trust the underlying web server. So it puts some uh, delimiter between message. And it, on the client side, what it does, it, it parses the message and, and call and make sure that your callback, your JavaScript function, gets called with a valid JSON message. So you never end up with half a message or something like that. So, <coughs> Atmosphere support Jersey as well. So here is the chat application. So if you look at that, uh, it's completely different than what we have seen earlier. If you're familiar with Jersey, so what Atmosphere does, it run Jersey and add some annotation. So if you're familiar with that Jersey REST framework, you can use it pretty easily uh, with Atmosphere. And again here, there is no concept of uh, you get everything for free under the hood. I always recommend to use Jersey if you use other features of Jersey. Of course, it's easy to write something. Uh, it's simpler than writing, you know, uh, that implementing the Atmosphere Handler API. But since day one of Atmosphere, at the beginning, that, that wasn't that easy. But now with the, man, the sets of manage uh, annotation, uh, you use, usually use Jersey if you use the other stuff from Jersey. Like here, it's pretty... It's pretty interesting because there is no Jackson or mapping defined. So here, when the, uh, the second uh, method gets called, like the broadcast, you, know, you already receive a message there. So that object has been created by Jersey. So it makes writing application pretty simple. So now let's, let's look at the client on the client side. So the client side, so here it's pure JavaScript. Uh, it's used uh, atmosphere. So the first thing, <coughs> sorry, atmosphere.js. So the first thing we want to do here is to, uh, to get a reference of uh, atmosphere. So you just do, the, the, the dollar sign is jQuery, because it's a jQuery plugin. At, it's atmosphere 1.0. In atmosphere 1.1, there will be no longer a dependency on jQuery. It will be a pure JavaScript. But, so you're just going to have to remove the star, the, the dollar sign here, and, but the API will be the same. So what you do here, what we do is, uh, so we define a socket, and we create a request. So in that request, so we set some, some basic stuff like uh, the content type, uh, uh, the transport. So here we tell Atmosphere, okay, let's try, uh, let's try to con connect to the remote server using WebSocket. If uh, it works, uh, fine. If it doesn't work, let's use long pulling as a fallback transport. And here we said, okay, track message length. So that means that uh, on the on the server side, you need the uh, the interceptor to be there. So again, so if you use that, you're guaranteed that your client will receive like an entire message, not half of it or two concatenated JSON message. So the the function callback are available are on open. So when the connection is open, on the transport failure. So on response failure is useful, let's say if you try to connect with WebSocket, it fails, but you don't want, here you have defined long polling, but you cannot do anything about it. You know, you're forced to, do, to use long polling. Instead, you can use the untransport failure to manually, or uh, using the API, set, do something before it reconnects. You can change the request, you can, you can do whatever you want. On reconnect, you get call. Of course, the important message, uh, function that you want to implement is on message, and that's the, the callback that I was talking about. If you don't use the uh, the uh, the interceptor to, to to have delimiter in your message, and if you go real time and you have a lot, then that function may, may, may be called with a message you don't understand because it's JSON concatenated. You have on close, and you have on error, which is called. Um, Pretty often on Internet Explorer. No, I'm just kidding. 
So, and when you're ready, what you do is you just do socket that subscribe, and then you receive a sub socket that I that I uh, that I call I call it sub socket here. And with the sub socket, the beautiful things here is you can do push. You can send anything uh, using that sub socket. If you use web socket, it means that under the hood, it's going to reuse the connection that, that has been opened. If you don't use web socket, if you use all other technique. What it does is it open a new connection. So you have to you have to remind remember that. So for a web socket, because it's bidirectional, even if we're suspended on the server side, we can still write on that visit, on that connection. With other HTTP transport, we always have to open a, another connection. It's transparent to the JavaScript client, but let's say if you need to open uh, if you have a firewall or a proxy, you have to make sure that at least the browser can send two connections at the same time. Not at the same time, but can have two open connections to, to your server at, at the same time. <coughs> okay, so again, I haven't talked uh, in a lot, I, I, give, I haven't given a lot of detail about broadcaster, but mainly the idea in Atmosphere is everything uh, is around the broadcaster. Is, uh, is you create broadcaster and you associate connection to that broadcaster. And then when you, when you want to send something, you just have to manipulate the broadcaster instead of keeping all the uh, a reference to all the connection open. If you have worked, let's say, with Tomcat uh, WebSocket API or even the Comet API, usually you have you have you know an HTTP response that you put into a, uh, a collection, and when you want to send something back to the to the to all all your open connection, you cycle on that collection, you know, and one by one you send message uh, using that object. So that, that a broadcaster is nothing complicated. It does exactly that, except that it's an abstraction of it. And you have, you can set like a broadcaster filter, you can transform the message when it get, uh, when it get broadcasted. So the interesting part with broadcaster, and I really like this API, is that, let's say you test locally, so you're gonna use the default broadcaster. But let's say you put your application and you have, let's say you work locally, you have one server, but let's say you go into the cloud now and uh, you, because you need to scale your application and that's the case with Wall Street Journal, is that now we're gonna have uh, two servers. Problem is, for some application it works pretty well, but let's say uh, you write, a, again, a chat application. If the browser is connected to server one or the upper server, and you have another user that is connected to the second uh, Tomcat server. So if I write, if I'm the first user, if I write something, so the second user will never get my message because it's not connected to my server. So, and that's happened pretty often if you have a cluster, or if you're in, like for Wall Street Journal, we use Amazon. So we have several instances. So we need a way to share the information between uh, the two servers. So here in this example, I use the Redis. Redis has a pub sub API available. It's pretty simple. But how it works in Atmosphere is you don't have to tell at all uh, Atmosphere to, uh, you, you, you have to tell which broadcaster to use, but that's, you don't have to recompile your application or change your application. What you do is you just add the Redis jar in your web app. And what Atmosphere will do is, is it will find that, and instead of using like the local or default broadcaster, it will transparently use the Redis broadcaster. So I'm using Redis, but this is the, the one that are available right now. So there is JMS, so you can transition message using JMS. We support XMPP broadcaster, so let's say you can use your Gmail account and uh, log into it using that broadcaster and, uh, and use like the, the J JTOC protocol or JTOC backend to share message between two instances. You can use Azelcat and you can use JGroup. I would say that the most popular one, JGroup is really popular, uh, Redis, of course, because it's really simple. And uh, Azelcat is, is JGroup and Azelcat are popular because you don't have to install anything else, you know? You just start JGroup and it works as it is. If you use Redis, you need to install Redis somewhere. So when you, uh, if you want, you know, when you're, if you have a really large architecture, 
uh, and if the radius pops up goes down, then you're you're screwed. So that's why I think J group is more popular than radius. And you have azot cast as well, which work the same way as as uh, as J group. So again, you can do all of this without using atmosphere when you have to code it yourself. Here, the good news is that as a developer, I work locally. I use a default broadcaster, and when I'm ready, I deploy. I put that in production. I just switch the broadcaster transparently. I don't have to change my code, and it's not like my demo that part worked. So. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, atmosphere component because I, wor wor I, I give a big warning about not writing WebSocket only application. But uh, if you have an intranet and you don't care and you have control about all the browser, then why would you want to support uh, HTTP? And in that case, even in atmosphere right now, you can write, so instead of writing, of using an atmosphere handler, what you can use instead is a WebSocket handler. And, uh, but of course, it only supports WebSocket. If it gets an HTTP request, uh, the, the, the client will receive an exception. So uh, I'm really surprised because that API seems to be uh, used by many applications right now. But I suspect it's just, I hope it's used intranet, not uh, fronting the web. So we have seen uh, that you can write uh, atmosphere handler depending on the level of detail that you want to put. Uh, you can have something as simple as, uh, as, as the one as that. Like that, so it's pretty simple. Here you just echo uh, what, you said, what you get. You can write a Jersey resources. So this one is, I would say, extremely popular. Uh, two reasons. First, it's because uh, since the beginning, Atmosphere supports Jersey, so everybody is working at the sample. And remember to see that big switch code that I show at the beginning in, in, in really small because I didn't want you to see to see it. But before I, I started adding like a more high-level API, you, you needed to do that in all your application. Uh, so people were just saying like, Ugh, so let's use Jersey. So that I, I that. I would, I would think that's why we use Jersey. Uh, and you have the Meteor API, which I haven't talked about, uh, but I can give a, a few, few words about it. So how many of you still write servlet? For you? So uh, what, what the Meteor is doing, actually, is it's just that what Atmosphere is, is, is able to do is uh, you take your servlet, you deploy it on top of Atmosphere. And what Atmosphere will do, will put the it's, uh, it will expose its API via attribute inside the HTTP servlet request. But let's say, like, let's take the uh, WCAP uh, framework. How they implement uh, atmosphere support is they just run on top of atmosphere, and they, from, the, from the HTTP servlet request, they retrieve the atmosphere object that were injected uh, under the hood, and they are able to do suspend, uh, resume, broadcast from there. So the idea that there is because some people or some framework, they already uh, have a framework. So they, they don't want to rewrite the framework as an atmosphere handler. So what they do in that case, they use Meteor. So I wrote that, and that, that one is really popular as well, which surprised me, uh, because I would, think, I would have think that nobody write servlet those days. They, you all write something on top of it. It seemed I was wrong. So. So that's the main component that you write with Atmosphere. So sometimes I, I think I should not show that slide and say, okay, just use Jersey or just use. But I think I, what I want to say here is, is you have the choice. So either if you have a legacy application you, that is, built, <laughs> is based on a servlet, then use the Meteor servlet. And if you want to write something uh, from scratch that support all protocol, uh, you, uh, all transport, you can use Atmosphere Handler. And if you want just WebSocket, just use WebSocket handler. Okay, so let's try to do a demo again. Because I did something just before the presentation. That's why it's not working. Maybe I should have seen an exception here. So because when I see exception, it works, and no exception doesn't work. So just talking about something here. By default, this is the interceptor that Atmosphere uh, implement. 
for you or installed for you. So JSONP, uh, SSC server side event because there is a protocol in between. So if it atmosphere detect a server side uh, uh, <coughs> that is you SSC as protocol, it will decode it for, for you. So inside your atmosphere handler, your Jersey resources, you don't have to care about what was used. But this is how it is done in atmosphere. <coughs> of course, you have my famous Android one, three main, and uh, I don't recall what this default header doing, but uh, that's not really why it doesn't work. It's the it fault. I need to find something. Okay, let's try again. So it's just a simple chat here of the application that I want to demonstrate. So here, uh, WebSocket is enabled in uh, Firefox. So it try it has tried to use WebSocket. It fall back to long polling. And uh, Chrome is using WebSocket. So let's try. Let's put one message here. Oh, it works. So then it's a simple chat. It, and it's really that line of code that I have shown. It's this. Uh, no, it's this one. So I was able to write a simple chat, single room, that support all the protocol using that line. Uh, so let's stop the demo now that it works. No. <laughs> so last topic, uh, and then uh, we can, you can ask questions. So all that code, again, is available on, on GitHub. So you can write WebSocket sub-protocol, because right now, <coughs> How, let's say, let's take Jersey as an example. When you send a message uh, using WebSocket, so how it works on, in Atmosphere, Atmosphere received that message, but there is, it's not an HTTP request. You know, there is no header, there is nothing, actually, it's just the message. So how can I make it work with Jersey? Where Jersey, because Jersey doesn't know anything about Atmosphere. It's completely fooled by Atmosphere. So it, how do, do, does it make it work with framework? Or how does it, how does it work so you don't have to care about uh, is it a WebSocket message or not? Is in Atmosphere you have a simple WebSocket sub-protocol. What it does, it, it takes the WebSocket message and transform it as a post, as an HTTP post. So, and then it creates an HTTP survey request, or it's called an Atmosphere request in Atmosphere, and inject that to, inside Jersey. So Jersey is like, oh wow, it's a normal HTTP request. So, but it's not. So now, it's pretty basic. And uh, like Forswagger Socket Protocol, which is more a JSON sub-protocol. So there is an API in Atmosphere called WebSocket Protocol that you can change. You can change the default. So let's say you want to write your own sub-protocol. Uh, you can still do that. And if you want, you can still full Jersey or full uh, framework uh, and by creating an atmosphere request on top of it, but you can put much more information it, uh, inside the protocol itself, inside the WebSocket message. Because if you want, let, 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 let's take Swagger Socket. What Swagger Socket does, it's, it's use JSON, but it puts some header, it puts some, some information that normally you're going you're gonna to see in a, in, in a normal REST call. What it does the, in, in, in that case is it wrap that or put that information inside JSON, send that to Atmosphere. And again, we want Jersey to work well, we want all the framework to work. So on the server side, the Swagger Socket uh, sub-protocol, what it will do is it will decode that information and create the proper Atmosphere uh, request object. So it's for advanced user. But what I want to say, still that, that, that API is used as well. So there is a lot of company that transit more information uh, inside the uh, WebSocket message, and this is how they make it work. So for more information uh, about Swagger Socket, it's at the end of the, of the talk I have. Uh... <coughs> Finally, uh, if you want to help me, go on GitHub just after the talk and click on the fork, because uh, uh, not the fork, actually, I made a mistake. It's the watch here, the watch stuff, because the more we are, uh, the better it is because it increases the visibility of atmosphere a lot. Because if you look at the most popular Java project on GitHub right now, uh, so you have atmosphere appear on the second page. So I would like 
to see him to see the project from the first day. So here is some information about all I have thought, and uh, yeah, now it's time for a question. Yeah. Uh, when I use um, an atmosphere um, client on my uh, mobile phone and I lose the connection for several minutes or half an hour, does atmosphere care, uh, take care of this, or uh, do I have to care about some exceptions? Uh, so by default, uh, atmosphere will try. If you lose the connection, by default, let's say it will take, you will try five times to reconnect. But in your application, in your code, you can change the code and uh, and say you can tell atmosphere to try like 50 times and wait one minute between every time it try again. So this is configurable. Don't tell me that was boring like that and only one question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Right now I want to do this on a, a, a server. What, what do I have to do to uh, do this? Just put a jar uh, inside? Do we have some configuration files uh, on the server which I have to do? Usually, if you're familiar with Java E, so it, you just create a WAR file and you deploy it, and that's it. Oh. Yeah. So, so it, it would work on a. Uh, Server, so yeah, you don't have to care about deployment. You, you will deploy everywhere. Uh, I was curious about uh, the Spring framework integration and if it's possible to plug this atmosphere into the common controller. Part, part. Yes, it, it's it's uh, it's available. It's uh, there is a lot of request, uh, a lot of external documentation on that. But yes, it works with Spring and it works with Juice as well. Um, if, if I uh, want to use this in a, a pure Java client, is there a Java API, client API too? Yeah, it, that's the, uh, that's the H one. HAC? Yes, and the West Sync one is work, working as, work as well. That one looks good. I will upload those slides on uh, slide share. So uh, <clears throat> if you follow Atmosphere on Twitter, you will see it. <laughs> okay, so thanks for coming. <laughs>